For Creamer Media's Polity, I'm Sashni Mudli. Joining me today is Dr. Candace Bailey, one of the editors of the book, We Were Always Here, stories of Black inventors across the African diaspora. The book, We Were Always Here, tells the little-known stories of the innovation and ingenuity of African-solving problems experienced by African people. And the idea for the book, surprisingly, came about in the 1990s. Can you tell us about Les Owen and his experience? So... You're absolutely right, Sashni. The book did come about in the 90s. Les is a labor consultant and he had an engagement uh, with people in the 90s where somebody, it was maybe a, a chat, an informal chat, let's put it at that, where somebody said to him, oh, well, you know, what is black people, what did black people ever invent anyways? I, I think this thing was obviously bothering him for a while. It's, it sat at the back of his head for a while. And he then thought, you know what, let me put together a collective of writers that actually can show people that black people have invented things. And that's where he then pulled us together as a collective of writers and said, let's do this thing where we actually tell people what Black people have invented across the world. And the book notes that while a person has to dig deep to find 21st century African-American inventors, and even more so for African inventors in other parts of the world, African-American inventors are far better documented in literature and on the internet than any other country in the world. Can you tell us why this is? Well, you know, I think that... uh, a lot of the inventors, and you'll see it in our book, we, we've divided the book into two sections. There's the modern era, and then we have the golden era. Now, the golden era is, is the time of the second industrial revolution from the 1870s to about 1940. Now, in that time, we were in the, the race for invention. So there were a lot of things that were being created. And Black people were behind a lot of the inventions. So obviously, because they were in the States, the States is one of uh, you know global superpowers. So they have documented those inventors. So that's why we see a lot of the inventors coming from the States in that golden era. And what they were doing in that time, Sashni, is that they were coming up with inventions that really helped make our world an easier place to live in, a better place to live in. So if you look at the person, my favorite example from the golden era is Alexander Mills, a barber who comes up with an invention of automated lift doors. Now, his barber shop was right next to a, a lift. And the story goes that he probably heard the lift doors opening each day. Well, the person opening the lift doors is a story that, you know, people fell to their death <laughs> with the lift. So he then came up with this invention of, of making an automated elevator door. So it's things that really have made our lives so much better. And can you tell us about the West African man who lived in the 1700s and his story relating to smallpox? Onisimus' story is one of the first stories in the book. We started the book at the time of COVID. And I think it was at a time when we were talking about vaccines a lot. And, you know, it was very interesting. One of the first pieces of research that we did around the book was this man who was actually a little boy <laughs> at the time who was a slave. And he shared his insights with his slave master about what they did to navigate smallpox in his country. And then it was used by his master and it was found to be a viable way of navigating smallpox. It's once again just a story of how people of color have done so much. And the only human pollination method still practiced today was discovered by a 12-year-old African slave. Can you tell us about this? Do you like Coca-Cola, Sashni? <laughs> well, your Coca-Cola wouldn't taste the way it tastes if it wasn't for Edmund Elvis, because he is the person who came up with a way of pollinating vanilla. And I mean, there's so many things, vanilla essence, cakes wouldn't taste the same if it wasn't for Edmund Elvis, you know. I mean, I think that's the point of the book. It's not only people that were a certain bracket of people that uh, were inventors. It's not only people who grew up in a certain way that could be inventors. What we're trying to show with the book is that inventors are all around us. They have the same problems that we had. And in fact, all they did that was different to what many of us would do on a daily basis is that they tried to find a solution to a problem. Now, I don't know how Edmund Elbius came up with, or why he came up with this, uh, with pollinating um, vanilla or finding a way to propagate vanilla. But what's interesting about it is that he was so young. Um, and he's one of many young people that we've captured in the book. If you look at um, Richard Turere, he is the Kenyan Maasai inventor who created lion lights. Now, lion lights are used to keep away predators at night. And he came up with this idea. I mean, he, and we tell a little bit of his story in this instance. He came up with the idea of the lion light because he'd lost his father's cattle to a predator. And he then needed to find a way of 
protecting the kraal, protecting their area. And he used to use a light uh, and he'd have to stay up at night. And he thought, oh, well, this is not working out. Let me get a scarecrow. But he found that this, the lions were too smart for the scarecrow and the, they'd figured out that actually the scarecrow wouldn't move. <laughs> so he then had to come up with a new invention. So what he did was he found if he put the lights there and clicked the lights, the lions would think that somebody was actually walking in the kraal. So ordinary people that needed to find a solution to ordinary problems um, and that's what inventors are and in south africa in the modern era your book documents the sheroes of eco bricks can you tell us about the sisters involved in this it's quite an interesting story because you know you don't often uh, and I mean, even in 2024, we don't think of women in the construction industry much. But here you have two women who actually showed us that they can do things in the construction industry. So the the sisters, Kelly Bonn and Kekletso, came up with an eco brick. They lived in Sasselberg and their father was actually in the construction industry. One of them were involved in the, in the family business and the other wasn't. But bricks and making of bricks was actually something that bothered them in their industry. They had a little business and... It, bothered them because it was it's actually a, a, not only a time consuming process but also a process that has a lot of pollution and they then found an eco-friendly way of creating eco bricks and initially when they first suggested this idea to the construction industry they were met with a lot of skepticism they were told that their bricks didn't actually meet the right formulas that didn't actually match the standard that it needed to and in fact they hit many curveballs in the sense that when they went to SAP, because you know, a, a, a brick um, forms part of a structure, it needs to go through a quality control process. When they went to the SABS for the quality control process, they were told that the bricks didn't meet that standard. So they had to go back to the drawing board. So they meet this challenge that they've come up with a solution, this amazing solution of an eco brick, but it doesn't meet the standard. They then have to go back to the drawing board, apply themselves and really work at making an invention that really works. And today we have eco bricks as a result of the of Keribone and Kikletso. And in recent years, a South African doctor was the first in the world to implant a middle ear replacement that had been 3D printed. Now, Mashudu Tsefalaudu's story is actually quite a cool story, um, Sashni. What you'll find is that, and in fact, what I loved about his story is the fact that he came against a lot of challenges early in his life. So when he was in primary school, they were asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? I mean, I think we've all had that question at some point. And he told his teacher, I want to be a doctor. <laughs> and his teacher said to him, you're not clever enough to be a doctor. Now, imagine being told at that young age that you're not clever enough to be something. And I mean, that's also another thing, another reason, another thing that's come out of the book. You know, we want to tell kids that it's not about being clever. It's about working hard. It's about education. Sorry, I venture off. Anyways, um, he gets told he can't be a doctor. He applies himself so well that years later, he's the person who comes up with an implant for the middle ear. Now, this is a massively technical operation and he uses technology, he uses innovation, he creates a solution that people all over the world are, are looking for. You know, he, people across uh, across the globe have come to him to find out his technique in, in terms of doing this. Now, that's another interesting story that really showcases how hard work, innovation and not being deterred by challenges really helps you excel in life. And I think that's also another theme that came out of the book that we really wanted to showcase is that a lot of the inventors had challenges. Uh, you know, if you look at both the modern era and particularly in the golden era, a lot of the inventors were met with racism, they were met with prejudice, um, but they didn't actually get deterred by it. They made sure that they persevered, worked hard, paid attention to the education and actually came up with these amazing inventions. And lastly, Candice, what are you hoping people will ultimately take away from your book? I know you mentioned the challenges that, you know, people of color faced in this field. Are you hoping to generate awareness or inspiration or maybe a bit of both? Of both. The book was written for teenagers. It was written for kids who need to think about their next chapters in their lives. What do you want to be when you grow up? Um, and it's to say to them, you know what, you can dream big. You can do whatever you want to do. All you need to do is work hard, push your education, and you can you can actually achieve what you want to achieve. I mean, I think that another important part of writing the book was to correct history, to show that there are lots of 
Black people, people of color that have done things and to make sure that they are captured in the book. Now, in our research period, we had more than 3,000 inventors that we had listed. We could not include all of them in the book. So what we had to do is we had to sift it down and find the inventors that we thought were most interesting for young people. In fact, that's the reason why we made the book in the way that we did, where we put the modern era first and the golden era later. One of the gentlemen, Victor Lawrence, he's in the US, he's from Ghana. Now, he's responsible for the internet speeds, essentially, these days. And he's still inventing things right now. <laughs> As you speak, he's in, his, he's in his late 80s or 90s, and he's still inventing things. So, you know, these are people that are alive, that you can feel inspired by, and that you can feel motivated by. That was Dr. Candace Berry, one of the editors of the book, We Were Always Here.